Good afternoon. Um, I'm Russell Smith, uh, MD of uh, Parity Projects. Um, approaching today's session really from uh, the the, the, uh, the perspective of somebody that's been um, working um, in and around uh, domestic retrofit for nearly 20 years, um, and on on the basis of it uh, of trying to work with contractors. Um, um, of course, uh, an individual dwelling is one thing, but uh, looking to try and uh, address the retrofit of uh, of of, of uh, domestic properties from the from the perspective of, of an immense scale up that we need, which the social housing decarbonisation decarbonisation fund is looking to support. Um, what I'm trying to do as well, um, just uh, as uh, this has obviously been built to try and help applicants to understand how to create successful supply chains, that can mean lots of things to very different to lots of different people. Uh, but what I wanted to do is just look at it into just the real basics. I suspect people in uh, that be watching this will be looking at it from, from various different angles. Um, I'm looking at it uh, particularly from the, the perspective of trying to get the job done well uh, and, and very likely using specialists in different areas. Um, what I will not be doing is looking at this from a pr procurement perspective. That's addressed in a, in a different masterclass uh, that's uh, been put together by the accelerator. Um, but I will be obviously touching on procurement. My, my view is that the, the contents of these, the, these, these next few slides will contribute to a good procurement process rather than it being about procurement. <clears throat> I do want to start though with, uh, uh, with a really important aspect of this, which is that every home is unique. Um, these are, this is the uh, the annual energy bill represented as a, as a pie chart. The size of the pie is the annual bill. The content is as per the, the constitutions on the left. What, what constitutes that pie on the left hand side there? Every single one of these houses is, is built around 1900 uh, within one part of London that we worked on as, as a lead up to the, uh, the Green Deal. Um, and um, so an EPC, for instance, would have uh, identified all these properties as, as being uh, pretty much the same and as, as needing similar things done to them. Um, just because we're dealing with social housing here and we might be dealing with a street or a block of, of, of dwellings that might on, on the surface appear identical. Uh, the issue we've got here is that, that we, we need to treat them all individually. And at the same time, if we're looking to pull together a supply chain that deals with these at scale, and hopefully at speed because climate change is upon us and we need to deal with it quickly, we need to be approaching this almost from a sort of a mass customization perspective. In other words, we need not only to understand technically what we need to do very quickly, but the processes that which uh, allow us to arrive at a technical design, the processes that will allow us to arrive at uh, a supply chain being put in place and that supply chain having delivered something successfully and reviewed by several people, uh, that all need to be done very quickly. So there's a number of elements within this that, that, that uh, allow us to, to really think, uh, put our head in the right place in order to get mass retrofit done in the UK and in particular, obviously, in this case, in social housing. Um, so I'm looking at this from, the, from two perspectives, really, uh, within the sort of the compliance area. All work that gets done uh, on existing buildings, whether it's um, sort of an energy focused retrofit or an extension or whatever, uh, we need obviously to be looking at our supply chain that is being capable of, uh, of working within UK building regulations. Uh, the planning regulations, uh, in other words, uh, how you might be changing the outside of the building and, it's, and how it fits relative to the rest of the streetscape. And obviously, the, uh, the, the, there will be others, but the, the, the other final one I put on the list here is, is, is making sure your supply chain works in a, in a safe way uh, so that it protects not only their own uh, staff, but the, those of third parties that will be living in and around the building. Um, on the regulatory side, <clears throat> um, there are mechanisms to allow um, the design and the installation to be checked by local authorities or pr private providers of uh, building control. Um, but also there's another mechanism that allows a contractor, if it works within a competent person scheme, to do their work, uh, sign off their own work and for that scheme itself to check a percentage of that work. Um, so it really that, that happens, whatever, uh, it, whatever the situation might be. Um, and one would hope that social landlords are very well versed with all those the, the elements and they, they will need to be built in uh, to uh, any uh, supervisor, project manager, um, uh, contractor and designer that's involved within the supply chain that's doing the work. 
When it comes to grant funded work, and in particular, you've been very clear the social housing decarbonisation fund guidance has specified that PAS 2035, the PAS 2035 standard will apply to this. Um, so in other words, there is a process set out for the coordination of the work um, and that contractors uh, will need to work within a, a very defined process. But also the PAS 2035 standard also sets out some, some additional technical standards that actually go in above, over and above uh, the uh, UK building regulations. In particular, part F uh, sets out, um, it's, it's actually quite tame when it comes to ventilation requirements and refurbishment, but PAS 2035 actually uh, asks the contractor uh, and designer involved in the process and uh, to, to go over and above those regulations, um, moving towards more of the new build requirements and the, re that the retrofit coordinator ensures that that designer and that contractor is doing their job properly. Um, Implicit within PAS 2035, therefore, is that a contractor must have PAS 2030 uh, uh, for that work. For those of you who are not, uh, not clear on what PAS 2030 is, it is a standard that sets out the, 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 the process through which a contractor must go in order to uh, demonstrate, in effect, that they are working uh, in, in a competent fashion. So in other words, a surveyor is competent, the contractor is competent, and they are carrying out certain processes and they're filling out uh, forms, uh, processes, and recording what they've done in a way that means everybody can check what they've done. Um, uh, it's relatively new, both of these are relatively new to the industry, uh, but not so new as the industry doesn't know what they are. Um, however, I will come on to some nuances within that in the next slide, but it, it, as a starter for 10, this is what the supply chain, not just contractors, but designers who will be intrinsic within this process need to understand. Uh, building the team. Uh, one thing uh, that I've learned over the years is communication is usually the root of all things uh, that have gone wrong. Um, and uh, I would urge you guys uh, to, uh, that for those of you putting a bid in, to think very carefully about involving a supply chain very early on. And again, I, I want to emphasize a supply chain doesn't just, just mean contractors, it means designers that might be involved as well. Uh, and, and give them very early on, very clear milestones when, when things have to be achieved. Um, then that they know what, what their level of involvement will be, how urgent it might be. I would also say the second point there about mind the gap, be 100% clear on the scope of all the people that will be involved. If what you're doing is asking a main contractor to take uh, control of everything on your behalf as a landlord, they still you need to still check that they are clear and that their own subcontractors uh, are clear on their scope as well. Very, very uh, often you'll find that um, you might have some specialist subcontractors involved and they all assume that some one particular part of the job is someone else's responsibility. Detail, uh, a detailed understanding of all the key stages and who's involved in which piece of work very, very early on saves a lot of bother later on down the line. Um, having said all of that, there still will naturally be uh, some, some elements of a job, which means you'll be at, reacting to issues. So it's absolutely critical that supervision very early on is very important, particularly if a supplier and one of their subcontractors is very new to you as an organisation. If they're not doing a good enough job, uh, um, and it might not be their own fault, it might be that they've not necessarily understood the requirements or they've not, not, uh, some of the training has only just happened. Uh, the technical training might be something that needs to be reiterated and reinforced. Uh, spot that very early on to make sure that these things are things that can be covered straight away. Um, unexpected changes to the scope of works might happen. You pull the floor up, there might be some damp, there might be some, uh, some rot that needs to be resolved. Uh, flexibility within the contract terms might be important and it's particularly if you've got some pricing structures that are set out so that it allows you to move very quickly to the next stage rather than to, to hand wringing in lots of meetings before things could be moved on. And on that basis, Attitude is something always put on the list. If you're working with a supply chain that is very open minded, willing to learn, will take feedback appropriately. It's, it goes a very long way to, to passing through these problems in a constructive fashion so that, that there's actually some uh, the me means to, to get things moving at the pace that you had intended in the first place. And one thing that can help attitude is some kind of uh, linkage with, a, with with any of your suppliers so that they, they know that there's some kind of long term involvement going forward. If they think this is a job job done and finished and then they can disappear and hopefully bill as quickly as they can, that doesn't lend itself to um, uh, to an incentivized supply chain so that they can really work with you as a client uh, for the longer term. So have, have a think about that. And finally, uh, but not least, of course, pricing. Uh, Clearly, if you're looking to do a large number of properties, you want some kind of pricing structure. Uh, maybe it's a schedule of rates um, that you'll be working with. 
but it's really important to be flexible with that for all the issues that I've just outlined on the left hand side there. The scope of work will need to be refined and I, I would I would say in the last year or so we've worked uh, sometimes in, in a very difficult circumstances with people that think they know what a retrofit coordinator is and other people think it's something slightly different. So start that discussion as soon as possible, allow your pricing structure to work with uh, with a variety of situations in some respects, particularly on the supervision and who, where, where responsibilities lie in particular with the, the design. So for instance, external wall insulation, you would expect your contractor to be the system designer as well as the installer so that if anything goes wrong with the external wall insulation it is the contractor's responsibility. However, you might be in certain situations where uh, the design will need to be carried out by a retrofit designer uh, with with appropriate professional indemnity insurance so that they can carry out a, an additional design, design that the contractor is not prepared to uh, uh, take on the responsibility for. So having those early discussions is really important and coping with that within your pricing structure needs to be thought of as well. And just to finish up, the scale of the need. This is some work that I did for the Construction Leadership Council, <clears throat> uh, final version two in July of this year setting out the number of people that need to be introduced to our industry to hit a 2040 net to zero carbon target for the UK. It is an absolutely enormous amount of people we need to get into our industry. If we set up our supply chains in a flexible, open-minded and a constructive way so that we can work together and learn together, I think uh, that's the only way we were ever going to sort of, if you like, introduce all of these new people in the, into the industry. So do bear that in mind in, in, as a way of just saying, OK, well, our supply chain will always be introducing new people to it, it's at least for the next 20 years. So tying it down to something that's inflexible is going to be, it's going to count against the, the mission that we've all got. Uh, thanks very much.